hours you spend in your day are very much connected to the environment in which you live. And what I mean by that is that if your home is in order and it's free of clutter, less overwhelm, your time will be spent on things you want to spend it on rather than spending the time on dealing with the mess and the overwhelm and the clutter cycle and the overall disorganization of your thoughts because you don't know which job to start first. If this resonates with you, please know this is exactly how I felt before I started my journey to a minimal homeschool and things are so much more simple now. Today's video is about my journey to our minimal homeschool that we have today. And I thought I would take you through some of the really simple home organization that you could start today. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Tiffany and this is Into Life Homeschool. My channel is all about homeschooling, motherhood and organization. So if those things interest you, I would love for you to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified for the next video. I am a homeschool mom to two beautiful kids here in Queensland, Australia, and I run a business. And we also have to juggle some extra things like therapies and um, hospital appointments for our children as well. My life is full and I don't have room to be wasting time on things that don't matter to me or to my family. That is what led me to um, my minimal approach to to homeschooling and then i just found such a relief when i found that balance in our homeschool that it just had a ripple effect on the rest of my home and then it you know turned into systems that i created for for being able to maximize my time so that is why um, I started our minimal, uh, you know, homeschool. When I decided to make change in my homeschool, that was my biggest pain point at the time. And I went on a war on paper clutter. <laughs> And because that was probably the biggest uh, mess. I just had piles of papers all over the place. They were all neat piles, but I had no idea what was in them. I had no idea where they should go or how I, I didn't have a system. So I created a binder system. I have a video on that. You can go and watch that if that is something that you feel that you need to set up in your homeschool as well. And it, it can look different. Think about the curriculum and what you do, what sort of subjects you have and find ways to make a system for that. But the biggest factor for me was all the printables and the loose paper. I wanted to have a home for that. So I created and I got um, a binder and I put, I have all of our books. So for writing, all of the books lived in there, everything is labeled. That is the most important thing because if something doesn't have a label and it could just be you writing on it with a Sharpie, it doesn't have to be fancy or pretty. Um, but if it doesn't have a label, your kids can't Put it away and that was my biggest thing i wanted to make sure my kids knew where everything is supposed to go so if i say put that book away please they're gonna know where to put it they're gonna know where it lives everyone has had a part in creating that system and it actually really works i wanted a system that allowed me to organize my homeschool days without it being like set in stone without me spending hours you know writing it all out mapping it all out and then having a visitor come for that day or you know a spontaneous outing that we had to take advantage of because it was too good to refuse but then everything is set back a day um, I wanted something that worked flexibly and I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere and I could not find what I was looking for that had a flexible approach to the kind of homeschooling that we do. I now have a digital planner that Freely Homeschool Planner uh, that we created and it holds all of my PDF curriculum. And I am able to create lessons through that PDF curriculum. And so when I go in to do a lesson, that page, that that lesson on that page in that PDF curriculum is linked in there. And all I need to do is press on it, click on that link, and it takes me straight to where that, you know, teacher guide, you know, the instructions, all of that sort of stuff. And then I can add an extra link for printables as well. It is 
phenomenal to be able to do that kind of homeschooling where it is not involving huge prints of PDF curriculum. It is not involving me to have to, you know, find places to store all of these pa extra papers. I don't even have to print it. I'm only going to use it once. Um, and even if I use it twice, I still wouldn't want to print it because it would be just, just such a waste, waste of money, waste of my time. And this is easier and this is better. I get the most out of my curriculum now. I really do get my money's worth of all the curriculum because I don't forget it. It creates a habit. It allows me to easily do it. And um, planning it is fun. <laughs> it's actually fun. So that is how I have combated paper clutter in my home. I have a system for all the finished loose paper as well. They go into pockets in our folder system. I have a system with my samples. I take photographs of the work that I plan on submitting to my authorities and it is all online anyway. So I can just run a put report through freely and I can upload it into the portal when it is my reporting time. So, so simple. I can also get um i can also run a report on all of my observation notes um it is just wonderful uh using freely homeschool planner to allow me to minimize all of the stressful paperwork that is involved in homeschooling so i will leave a link to that in my description box below as well um, if you would like to give it a go i've also i'll also leave links to the particular videos that really hone in on the paper organization of things because I have done videos solely dedicated to those things. Um, so you can go and check those out as well. So when it comes to our homeschool space, I actually created a dedicated homeschool space because one of my pain points when I was homeschooling was our dining room table would always be filled with projects that were a week long. And I didn't want to have to put them away because once I put them away, I was less inclined to get them back out and the kids were less inclined to want to do it. If they're there out on the table, the kids would just literally just see it walk past it and go, oh, I might add that to it or I might do this. And that's what I love about homeschooling. Like they're always kind of dipping into their projects and, and just adding bits and pieces or having a thought. And I think that is the most amazing way of learning is when you, they have those spontaneous ideas and they can add to the project and it's already there. That doesn't mean it needs to look messy though. It doesn't mean that you need to find somewhere else to eat your dinner. <laughs> so for me and the way that we homeschool with the kinds of projects that we do that are kind of those, you know, week long sorts of projects, I needed a homeschool space. I didn't need a room though. So I just cleared a wall um, I had the perfect spot in our living room and it's off to the side. So it's not the first thing that visitors see. And I mean, even if it was, I wouldn't, I'd still do it. <laughs> Nothing cost a fortune. I just did it as a experiment to see if we'd, we'd use it. And we did, and we loved it. And it worked so well for those projects. Um, and it works so well for just spontaneous drawing sessions with friends like whenever we have friends over they always gravitate to that that desk and they do drawing together and they can all sit together like the table's that long that it sits kind of four kids on in a row um and they're all drawing together and they can see what they're drawing and they you know you know complement each other and all that sort of stuff so the learning space has been by far one of the best things that I have done in terms of allowing the kids to have their own space, their own area to keep certain things. Those are the kinds of things that I think are really worth thinking in depth about and planning out what you need and making a list of all the things that you really just feel like are driving you crazy. Write down the things that you dislike the most about your homeschool and then use that as a goal to fix it find ways. And you might not find the exact perfect way straight away. You might have to do some experimentation like I did and keep it low cost. Don't commit to really expensive things, especially furniture. Don't commit to expensive changes because then that pressure is on for it to be perfect. And if it didn't work, you feel like you, you don't have the confidence to try again. And this really is something that you need to just keep trying different things. You know, in a year's time, maybe that homeschool space won't work for us with a different curriculum, maybe. 
um, you know, we need, and that would be okay if it didn't, because I didn't spend a whole lot of money on setting it up anyway. So it's okay. And I can take that trestle table away and it stores perfectly, you know, up against a wall. Um, it's actually really easy to just store away in the garage. So those are my suggestions with a homeschool space. I really love writable surfaces rather than paper. So we incorporate lots of whiteboards, blackboards, all of those kinds of things. If they're mag magnetic, that's even better because you can use so many manipulatives with magnets. You can also put up really great pieces of um, references and pictures that the kids have drawn and you can turn it into like a really nice collage or focusing on sight words or words that you're, you know, vocabulary words. Uh, you can put that all up on those boards and then when you need a clean, fresh start, you can take it all off and nothing is permanent and it's just easy. So those are the kinds of things that I love about our homeschool. I love our two bookcases either side. That is all I am allowed to fill for bookcases. I have given myself a boundary and I'm not crossing that boundary. And if anything, I like to have them quite open. So I've got space to showcase projects and things like that as well. So I tend to really be hard on the books that come into our home. So unless it's a book list from a really good curriculum, I tend to scrutinize it and really just go, hmm, do we really need that? Because I don't have a homeschool room when it comes to the ugly kinds of kinds of things like printers um, and, you know, just like stationary supplies and all of that sort of stuff. I tuck that away into a little buffet or a sideboard, depends on what you call it. But, um, I tuck that away into there and that was a very low expense, you know, low cost, um, sideboard. It's not like proper wood. It's just wood veneer. It didn't cost a whole lot of money. Um, and I just liked the, the color. It went well with our home. It doesn't like stand out and it, it, doesn't look like something you would use in an office either. Um, I like the fact that it's got doors. It can be hidden behind there. I have our paper that needs to be filed. So things that I'm planning on, you know, books that we finished, like actual exercise books that the kids are actually filled with work, they go into that basket. And every year we actually uh, have a reflection time. So the kids bring out all of their work onto the de onto the onto um, our big dining room table. We lay it all out and we go through it all. And it's just so lovely. Um, it's a great way to just look through the progress from the year. I have everything kind of, I just sit things on top of each other. So it's all kind of dated in, in order because as we finish something, it's obviously, you know, it's in order from when we finished it. So uh, that really helps with me going through work and finding samples. So obviously I'll look at the bottom of the pile to find the earlier work. And then at the end of the pile, I'll have that. Um, and those are kinds of things that I, even though I use Freely Homeschool Planner and I plan out our samples that we're going to provide, sometimes I think, oh, there is something else that I'd like to add to that, that this happened on that day and we did that. And that could be, you know, added into the sample or my notes um, just as another point of reference of proving that you know I facilitated that learning um, so that is really helpful I don't like to get rid of anything in terms of um, work that the kids have completed until I have completed that homeschool report because I never know what I might need there might just be something that comes up that I just felt that I needed so I keep all of that and after that reflection time, after that reporting time, I go through and I um, let the kids choose what they want to keep and what they want to get rid of. And everything else just goes away. So it either gets recycled or given to family members as work that they, you know, the kids have done here, have a look, you can have a look and then you can get rid of it if you want or rip out some pages that you like, put them up on the wall, whatever. It's up to them. But it's just a matter of, you know, sharing things out and um, offering those opportunities as well. I love my sideboard. I love the fact that it can house all, everything I need. So whenever it's reporting time, I just go there. That's my area. I'm not running around the house trying to find all different things. That is the area that I live uh, when I'm making all of my reports. In terms of art and craft and uh, board games and all of those kinds of things, um, they all live 
in one cupboard. Now I have a video on this as well, so I'll link it in the description box below, but it is, that was probably the biggest transformation and the biggest commitment I made to really homeschooling, like really feeling like a homeschooler. I changed our walk-in linen cupboard. We don't have a whole lot of linen because I'm minimal. I don't like having a whole lot of linen to have to wash. So I uh, decided that we weren't using that cupboard uh, to its full potential. So I took everything out, moved the linen to somewhere else. And I am lucky. I do have quite a few cupboards in my home, even though my home is on the smaller side, I do have great storage opportunities, but this walk-in cupboard is now full of art and craft and things that we use on the daily because we are a big art and craft family. Now, if you're not a big art and craft family, you don't need a whole walk-in cupboard for it. That's fine, but maybe you're into other things. Um, maybe you do need a cupboard devoted to a particular kind of thing that your kids really love. And if that's the case, that's a really great idea to go down. Um, but for us, it's all about sewing. It's all about um, creation. It's all about board games. It's all about, um, you know, painting and really just, you know, uh, my son loves making uh, masks and all of the really intense, messy kinds of things. <laughs> they love it. And I needed something that allowed them to go into that cupboard and see where everything is and actually know where to put things away. We still struggle with that. We still struggle with putting away things, but it's much, much better. It's much better for me to say, that needs to go away now. You're finished with that. Can you please put it away? They will put it away. They know where it is meant to go. And that is what I'm talking about when I, when I say label things and things need to have a home. That is what is so, just so much more important to, to be able to provide a home for something um, so that your kids know where it lives and where they can get it so that they, when they feel, you know, inspired to do something, to create something, they're not stuck looking, you know, spending an hour looking for something because most kids aren't going to feel like doing it after they've found the thing or are they even going to spend an hour looking for something? I don't know if they're that patient. I'm not sure if my kids are that patient. They probably just give up on it and just go, oh, I'm just going to go watch a show or do something less, you know, exciting for them. And I don't want to risk that. So I made it a priority to really, really have that organized system for them to be able to create things. So those are the kinds of physical things that I've done. The other change that I've made has been around allowing us to get out and about, getting out of the house. I have mentioned earlier in the video, getting out of the house isn't easy for us on a good day. Um, shoes and socks and what like appropriate clothing for the weather all of those things are um, factors that need to be talked through with my kids um, at the moment that's not going to be forever but right now that can be stressful um so if we're going on an adventure or if we're going on a spun in particular a spontaneous outing um it can result in a lot of stress so that's why i incorporated a system right where we get into the car we have a really great cupboard space in our garage right before you get into the car i created i have a video on this so i'll link it in the description box below as well it's called getting out the door <laughs> because that was my one of my biggest pain points as well i really wanted to have an active outdoorsy kind of approach to our homeschooling um and that was something that the kids were not super keen about. They didn't want to get outdoors that much. Then, now they love it. See, this is what it, it facilitated that, that journey to them loving being outdoors more than being indoors. Um, but without incorporating that system, I feel like we probably wouldn't have got to where we are today. And that is simply just having everything that we could possibly need in that box. So I, I change it out seasonally. Um, I change it out depending on needs. So I will have our raincoats right there in our, where we keep our shoes. I will have sun cream and mosquito repellent in our adventure box. I will have a blanket for us to sit on 
you know, um, if the grass is wet or, you know, just to have a place to lie down, I will have that in our adventure box. A snake bite kit in summer is uh, absolutely essential. We have seen so many snakes this season, um, even with all the rain that we've been getting. So that is absolutely essential. Seeing all those things at our fingertips, having extras as well. So I've started to actually buy extras because things are so all over the place with COVID and all of that wonderful stuff. So um, it is hard to get some of those things. So I make sure I buy two mosquito repellents when I'm getting more mosquito repellent. I buy two sun creams, all of the things, like just really think through what it is that you need. And does, would it really break the bank if I bought an extra one? No. Okay, well, I'm going to do that because that will allow us to always have that thing that we need. Or maybe you can put an extra one in the car or hats can, you know, you can get an extra set of hats just as spares. They don't have to be fancy. Keep them in the back of the car so you know that if you forget your favorite hat, there's going to be an extra one there and you're not going to end up fried. <laughs> so those are the kinds of things that I have incorporated. I created a box for our co-op because I knew that we needed the same things every week for co-op. So why not have them there? I even went to the trouble of keeping our extra, our favorite lunch boxes in that co-op box. So once I washed them up, they went in the co-op box. I bring the co-op box into the home when I'm packing it and I pack our lunch boxes and they go straight back into that basket. And the kids if they were at co-op, if they took their hats off, they would put them into the basket because they would always be with us. And then we wouldn't leave. Well, we have left things behind before, but we usually don't. <laughs> and that is like such a big thing for us. <laughs> the amount of shoes and, and socks and hats we've lost in the past have, has been embarrassing. So it's just helpful to just be able to um, have a home for things even when we're out the kids know where they go. Um, and that just, it's, it's a no brainer. It's so easy. So um, that is my story behind, you know, getting out the door and being more organized in terms of spontaneous adventures and things in your homeschool as well. And the thing is, is that when you're forgetting things, it can really make it such a negative experience. You really resent actually going and doing the thing um, when you've forgotten it or you know imagine forgetting mosquito repellent we've done that and we have eat, been eaten alive and it is it was just such a horrible experience but that horrible experience came home with us and continued to ruin our day because we were just itchy all day um, like those are the things that you really don't want to have especially if you've got kids you know like earlier on you know the early three four years ago when my kids weren't that keen on getting outside when things like that happened that would be like a solidifying that negativity towards well I'm not going to that place again I got eaten alive last time why would I want to go back there um <laughs> and that is not the experience that you want so we really do need to be prepared for those kinds of things and we can all have so much as such a better time so those are this my simple um organization homeschooling tips those are the things that I started with when we started out on our minimal journey. I have much, much bigger projects that I am going to be uh, approaching this year and I can't wait to share them with you. I just wanted to put it out there and encourage you to make some changes in your homeschool if you haven't already um, and think about ways that maybe these things could be, you know, brought into your homeschool if you're looking or feeling like things are getting out of control. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've maybe found some of these suggestions helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you um, have found some of these things helpful, if you're feeling inspired maybe for some projects that you might be incorporating into your home. What are your favorite things in your homeschool that really help you um, just get through that clutter and overwhelm? If you like this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and it also lets me know this is the kind of stuff that you like to um, learn about and hear about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.